All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of The National Pulse. I'm Raheem Kassam, the editor-in-chief of thenationalpulse.com. And it's Wednesday, September the 22nd, the year of our Lord, 2021, broadcasting live from a drizzly Capitol Hill. Got a very special guest in studio with us today, but just before we get to that guest, I want to make a few comments about some of the things we've seen in past days, especially some of the things that I don't think the media is covering, and certainly social media is covering up for. I want everybody after this podcast to go and find the videos coming out of Australia of the police chasing down ordinary citizens on the streets who are protesting not about extraneous quote-unquote rights as we've seen so many left-wing groups do over the past couple of decades but basic rights the right to go outside buy food go to the pub I mean I find that to be a pretty basic right quite frankly but it's disgusting what's happening in Australia and it should be condemned all around the world police firing rubber bullets at their own citizens for having the temerity, the audacity to stand in an outside space. So make sure you go and seek those videos out and share them as widely as possible. Welcome to the National Pulse. Joining me in studio today is none other than my good long-term friend, member of the European Parliament, Jerome Riviere. Jerome, thank Hi, you for Ryan. coming back. Thank you for having me. I mean, last time I just didn't think you were going to come back after after being in here. I think you know it was too messy, it was too smelly, it wasn't I, up to your standards. I did hesitate, yeah. but I mean, <laughs> you know, it's always enjoyable to to chat with you and so many things to discuss. So many things to discuss. Look, I'm really grateful to have you here um, for the next half an hour or so because uh, I stopped talking about uh, an institution in about 2016, mostly because we left it. I started to feel like. Americans do when they turn to me and they say we stopped caring about what you people thought in 1776 and I stopped caring about what the European Parliament thought in about 2016 I mean a little bit after that and and we still have some ongoing Brexit negotiations but I have to confess that's my way of confessing that I haven't been keeping up to date as much with the machinations out of the European Parliament and I think you know regardless as to whether or not I make jokes about the institution and, and, you know, especially British people now, kind of we have to um, because there can be no regret uh, now. Um, It's still a very important global institution and it still commands at least the respect of the people who are in charge uh, in a lot of places in the world. We heard Joe Biden talk about uh, a lot about Europe uh, yesterday. So let me get a catch up from you. Um, what is it? What has the European Parliament been up to? What have you been up to in your role as a member of the European Parliament over the last couple of years? Okay, you started by saying that it's an important um, world organization. It is an organization and that's all it is. Hasn't changed. It's still a, a crushing machine, a machine that decided to crush nations and crush people that live in those nations. But since Brexit, a lot has, ha- has been happening in all those nations because people are, are waking up. You remember, Brexit was supposed to bring plagues. I mean, Britain was supposed to disappear. Unemployment was going to be massive. Safety, security was going to go down the drain. And what do we witness? Nothing at all. We see that the, 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 the British people have decided to take their, their, their life into their hands, and they are doing pretty well. And I'm happy for them. That's all I wished for them. It's just like deciding about your fate. And this is what's slowly happening in, in other nations. We see that in Poland, in Hungary, uh, in such countries, they have governments that have decided to take care of their people before, before taking care of a bureaucracy that is um, based in, in Brussels and that is not elected and want to decide for the, for the people. So the, the, the big reveal is with the, the COVID that uh, happened because Europe, the European Commission, let's be specific, because Europe is a continent, and the United Kingdom is part of Europe, but it's not part of the European Union. And the European Union, you have a commission. This commission now is headed by a... a it's like the Politburo, effectively. Yeah, it's like, definitely. There are, there are many things. Even the buildings look a little bit like right. Soviet Union buildings. But the, 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 so the commission um, decided that they would tackle this, uh, this COVID crisis. 
And they are the one, for example, who decided that they are going to buy the, um, the vaccine. Uh, it is not part of what they are supposed to do. It's though the health issues are nation-based. But all the nations in facing the crisis decided, oh, let's give it a go, let's uh, European Commission tackle it. And they, they acted like a, some kind of marketplace, like trying to buy on behalf of everybody. They were the worst. We are the, we are the, the place where the vaccine are the most expensive, mm. where the contracts are the most hidden. As a, as a member of the Europe, European Parliament, I still do not have access to the contract negotiated between the European Commission and the large uh, pharmaceutical labo laboratories. You are not able to scrutinize that. We, we are not able. We are not allowed to scrutinize that. So, you know, what, what a laughing stock the European Parliament is. The first duty of a parliamentarian is to control the spending of the institution. And, and we cannot do that. All we know is that the, 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 the European Commission, and we don't know who negotiated, so we don't know if there is any conflict of interest between the people right. who negotiated and the labs. All we know is that the labs are not responsible for any side effects. They won't have to dish out a dime. If, if thousands or tens of thousands of people have a side effect that are you know, debilitating, that, that could cost money to, to treat, it's up to the taxpayer to dish out the money. Just like, just like in the United States, just like in the United Kingdom, there's no liability for these big pharmaceutical exactly. companies on, on, on this basis. And, and not just a financial liability, there's no prosecutorial liability. Nobody no. can go to jail if, if thousands of people no, die. No liabilities. It, it is the first time, I believe, in the history of institutions signing a contract with a private institution that they are exempted of any type of liability. I am pretty sure that it is in contradiction with quite a couple of, 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 of rules and regulations, specifically constitution of certain countries. We have not reached that point yet. I believe that in the years to come, it, this contract are going to be an example of what should not be done. But the people, you know, in France, people understood that it was wrong. They felt because uh, the European Union was late in delivering vaccine. Um, vaccine, we can discuss uh, yeah. the, the subject of the vaccine later, but for the people who want to get vaccinated, and quite a lot of them want to be vaccinated, it's only fair for uh, a government to bring the vaccine and make it available for the people who want to get vaccinated. But because of the European Union lack of efficiency, Uh, France, for example, was, was one of the last countries to be able to offer those vaccines for the people who wanted to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So the European Union, the Commission, showed its inability to tackle such a crisis. And it's, it's a big reveal. People now doubt the fact that the European Union if, is efficient. And if you look at polls, and we do regularly polls in France to, to see what is, a, what is a belief, because for a long, long time people looked up to, the, to Europe because the European Union was mixed with Europe. And now they see a difference between Europe, the continent, the history, the civilization, and the institution. And the institution is really failing and, and doing badly. Well, you know, you mentioned the, um, you know, the vaccine itself. And, you know, there's a lot of ongoing debate. I don't even think we need to get into the debate about that. I think, you know, the, the, the dividing lines have basically been drawn. All I'll add to that is maybe it was a blessing in disguise that you weren't as, as quickly vaccinated and that people didn't necessarily have it forced down their throats as quickly as oh, it they, was in other countries. Yeah, but they have it forced but, down their throats. But now you have We it. have a passport. There right. is a green passport in France. Can you stop preempting my questions? Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Did I read your soul? You know, I, I know. You, just, I, you look deep into my eyes and you see my soul. Um, but tell us about that. Uh, you, have, you have a vaccine passport now. What does that apply to? And how are the French people reacting to that? It's all, you know, when people are worried, scared... When, when terror is, uh, is, is pushed upon them on a daily basis, then people tend to accept things that are not acceptable, that do not make sense. So we have a, a, um, a vaccine passport that uh, either you have to have a, a vaccine or you have to have a PCR test every three days or less than three days old in order to be able to go to a restaurant, mm. in order to be able to go in, in most public transportation, in order to be able to go in some food stores. But very quickly, some people complained about that, and there were a, a lot of lawsuits. And the lawsuits said, you know, you cannot have a, a, a vaccine passport in order to go and be able to buy food because this 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 would be a disgrace. So they had to back down, and slowly, it is it is being removed. There is a, a, a law that was passed uh, or a project uh, presented by the French government yesterday that said that the vaccine mandate was uh, the vaccine passport. Sorry, was supposed to last until November 15th. Mm -hmm. Now they want to extend it, but they want to extend the possibility because it's a huge control tool for the government, but at the same time they are slowly saying that they are not going to put it into effect. 
but they keep the stick in their hand because all these made all those so-called global globalized government they transform them in in a illiberal government they 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 enjoy the fact that they can tackle down the people they enjoy the lockdown look they say a word and you stay home it, it, it they they are engrossed with the power that this uh, pandemic gave them and and going back on the beginning of your uh, of your show what you said about australia is is dreadful mm-hmm. i mean we we don't want the, the biggest threat that we have is is uh, the ccp the chinese communist party it's communist china and australia is implementing every single rule that they have in in china to control population who are fighting against that and all the globalist government that are in place are playing down the road of the chinese communist party the only government that do not do that are the polish government the hungarian government the slovak government were government that believe in nations and are listening to their people and in uh, april of next year we have presidential election in france and i i truly hope that uh, marine le pen that i'm campaigning for will be elected because this is what we are the, the base of the, of her platform is to say we want to reinstate freedom mm. freedom of the people to decide whether they want a vaccine or not freedom of the people to decide if they want to travel or not i don't mind if someone wears a mask i don't want to have to wear a mask i don't want i don't mind if someone gets a vaccine i don't want to have to have a vaccine and this is the platform marine is 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 working on is like let's trust the people we make things available to them but before all it's a freedom to decide personal freedom of choice what about the protests we've seen um we've seen actually let me rephrase that question in the united states people were actually i think a little slower to take to the streets than in some other countries um other places have i think a little bit more um cultural um historical relevance with with going to taking to the streets as a mechanism by which to 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 make your voice heard and certainly on the political right americans haven't necessarily always been comfortable with that sometimes in fact i think even in the united kingdom the political right has kind of sneered at people who take to the streets you know call them calling them crusties and greenies and whatever and uh, all those things can be true at the same time um but it did seem to me that people especially in france and especially on the back of all the gilets jaunes protests that they were more willing to come out and i've tried to i've tried to say to the american audience hey you know if you're not going to bother to go and stand outside your state capitol building if you're not going to bother to go and pick at your politician's house or whatever it is they're not going to listen to you they have this like you say this stick by which to beat you with and they will continue to try to beat you with it so tell us about the protests are they ongoing and 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 what is the i i've seen videos of for instance policemen firefighters who kind of are standing down or even taking walking to the other side of the street and standing with the protest is that commonplace or am i just seeing you know i would flashes. not say that commonplace but the, the as you said it is embedded in some culture sometimes i'm i don't think it's very comfortable when i see the number of strikes that's go on in france it's just for anything people go on strike and then you have no transportation or you have like you know, roads that are cut by people driving slowly because they want to protest something yeah, so croissant shortages very, it's terrible <laughs> very often it's 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 a pain but on sensitive subjects such as the the the, the freedom of choice it became very useful because yes people took the street and they have been taking the street every saturday to protest against the the, the lack of uh, of freedom and what is interesting compared to the gilets jaunes is that the people that go every saturday and protest half of them are vaccinated mm-hmm. half of them are not so it has nothing to do with pro vax or anti vax it has to do with the fact that they don't want the government to tell them what to do so it is is it, the media reflecting that accurately the media is, is reflecting that they, they, oh, wow. what they are not reflecting is the, the the number of people that are taking the streets so they are lying but they have been lying forever about the number of people you take any you you just take the video of any uh, any saturday you put them together and you see that it at least 10 times what the what the fake news media are saying so mm-hmm. when they tell you it's 150,000 people you know it's going to be close to a million people that were in the street wow uh so so yes people are are upset with the restraint that the government is uh, is putting on doesn't mean that macron will act on it uh, as i as i said before he's extending the the the, man, the mandate and the p- capability to have this uh, passport slowly will release some of the some of the constraint but he's he's keeping the stick just uh, just in case in case of what i don't know but just in case we have been living under exceptional laws for the past two years 
It's way too long, and people are fed up with that. Um, I don't know if taking the street is a, is a way to do. I fear that what we need to do is convince the people that the only way to act and to be heard is to show up at the polls. So we had election recently, a uh, regional election. They are not super important because regions do not have a lot of powers, but people did not show up. We need a, we need a strong turnout of the of of the people and the presidential election of uh, next year in April is, is is of the essence. If people don't come and don't show up and don't say who they want to be in charge of France, then we the the the, the future of France and the future of the most European countries is doomed. Because your guys, your party, Rassemblement National, had a lower than expected turnout or lower than hoped turnout in those regional elections. Is that yes, is that is. is that because you think people think um, their votes don't matter? I think that they believe that the regional election did not matter. Mm. I, I hope that they have understood that the only election that does matter is the one that elects the president. Because in France, the, the, the French president, in fact, has, has more power than the, than the U.S. president. Sure. It is very concentrated. He, he gets to, nomin- to, to name, to nominate a lot of, uh, the, first of all, the government, but a lot of uh, public officials. And the way it is set up, there is no real counterpower. The, 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 the French Congress is not a, a real counterpower to the, to the president. The, the initiative, the legal initiative in order to pass a law comes to the French government. It was all organized by, by de Gaulle around the time when he wanted to make sure that things would go his way. Mm. Uh, but since then, we have Macron, and Macron is, has nothing to do with the General de Gaulle, but he still holds the same power. So the only election that matters is the presidential election. So the the hope and what we're, the message we are going to carry is that it is there is one chance every five years to change and to have your vo- voice heard and they have to show up during those uh, those, those election in uh, in April next year. And and how are you feeling about it? What are the polls telling you? The polls right now it's the beginning of the campaign. So the the latest poll we you know it's right now for the, we have a two turns system. So yes. we have a runner up system where only the two. Best candidates. So just explain that one. for the audience who don't know so how the fact, election yeah, works. Yeah, the election. You have we we don't have a two party system, so we have we'll have a lot of candidates, maybe seven, eight, or nine candidates. And if a candidate uh, reaches uh, the threshold of fifty uh, percent, then he gets elected. But it never happened in in our election. So then two weeks after, you have a runoff with the two first ones. And um, right now, Marine Le Pen and Macron are expected to be the runner-off, exactly like what happened in uh, 2017. And uh, at the at the runoff right now, the polls are showing 45-55, 55 in favor of Macron. But uh, two days ago, one poll was released showing that we that Marine Le Pen is at 48 and Macron at 52. So wow. we we have we have a we have a window of opportunity, seven months to campaign. Seven in seven months, many things can happen. Uh, especially with the unstable world that we live in, with what's going on in, in the Indo-Pacific, with what's going on in Afghanistan. So a lot of things can trouble the, the game. Remember in uh, in December 2019, nobody expected COVID and it changed everything and it changed the presidential election in the United States. So we have we have to keep we have to, to keep cool and, and be concentrated on the message that we want to carry. We want for France to regain its sovereignty. And we want the people of France to regain their freedoms. That, that's what we're going to campaign on. But I'm pretty optimistic because people are fed up with this globalization. Globalization, the, the main thing that it brought us is COVID. Mm. So we don't want any more COVID. What do you mean when you say that? I mean that it's because of the of the unchecked travel. It's because of the fact that we are buying from very far away a product that we could uh, produce locally. It's because we don't respect some uh, legal organization, for example, in, uh, in in France, in, in Bretagne, which is on the west coast of France, you you, you have a fisherman that that fish some uh, some 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 shellfish, and those shellfish are frozen, put in planes, sent to China. In China, they are disassembled, cleaned, brought, frozen again, sent back to France to be sold on French market. Doesn't make any sense. Disgusting. And actually, you, uh, it is disgusting. Yeah. And 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 you know that this is going to 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 bring around some viruses. It's going to bring around some some unknown disease. Mm-hmm. Same thing, uh, when, when you buy Nice, I, I am from Nice, which is in the southeast of France, wonderful city, sunny, really enjoyable, and it's known for its flower market. Mm. And uh, in Nice, we, we, you, you can buy roses, and the main, uh, the local uh, place where you can buy roses is in, in Italy. It's 25 miles away. Mm. But a rose coming from Italy is more expensive than a rose coming from Kenya by plane. 
This is what I mean by globalization. Because in Kenya, they don't care about their water resources and they're right. wasting them. They don't care about having children cutting the roses at, at, at eight or 10 years old and they don't have any labor law protecting them. Mm -hmm. So this is what globalization has brought. It has brought unfair competition. It has brought unfair low prices for things that come from far away. And it, it is part of the problem with the climate. Because when you bring a rose that comes through a plane, imagine the quantity of fuel that has been burnt in order to bring that, that rose. So it is unfair on so many levels. And the conclusion of that was uh, the COVID spread. And the COVID spread basically killed the globalization. So now they're on the defensive. Mm. And it brings us back to the reason why do all those governments, those, those governments who advocate globalization, why do they have laws to, 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 that are very harsh? Is because they, they have understood that this, this trend, this effort of globalization is over. It's doomed. So they are going into, they are becoming fear mongers. And authoritarians, very authoritarians. Yes, I mean this is this is you agree this is what's happening now. The the hand is clasping around the the, the grains of sand, you know, and and they're losing people as a result of it. I've started to notice there's there's actually quite a lot of consternation even amongst the liberal press. Yesterday, Boris Johnson was in the Oval Office with with Joe Biden. I don't know if you saw this video. Boris was trying to answer a question that one of the members of the press shouted out, and Biden's staff start screaming over the top of the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and then usher the press out of the room. This is, I mean, isn't this what they've always accused people like Putin of being like? And it's happening in America's very own Oval Office. Yeah, but it is this, indeed, that's, that's what we're saying, is that they don't want the people to see the truth. We have seen that throughout the 2016 election. We have seen that throughout the 2020 election. And we're, we, we, we did the same thing in, in France. In 2017, we had a very tough time passing our message through because the, the media are, first of all, the media are private-owned and they are owned by financial corporations that live of globalization. So they are not going to sow the branch on which they are sitting. And that's why we need... More media like the one you have that that does not uh, that is not funded by large financial organization, but is, that is funded by 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 the by the people that want to hear fair and true news. And this is a, a, a huge trend that's going on. You have more and more of those media saying things the way they are. Well, I am I am of the belief, and I will try to convince you to do your own you know memoirs from Paris as a podcast. And even if you know even if it's for the audience over here, because I'm fascinated by everything that you have to say every time. You know, you, you, you come over here and you join us, whether it's on the War Room or this show or both. Um, I think it's fundamentally uh, incredibly important to hear what's going on over there. And, and that, you know, that isn't restricted just to what is taking place on the streets of your, of your towns and cities. It's also what's taking place in terms of foreign policy. Because right now, there, is, there appears to be, and I don't know whether you, you think some of this is, is theater or some of this is electioneering on certain people's parts, um, but there appears at least to be a diplomatic, a rather large diplomatic spat that's taking place uh, predominantly between France and the United States, but also with the United Kingdom and Australia involved. Uh, it comes on the back of this new AUKUS uh, uh, strategic defense uh, alliance that was announced uh, very hastily, by the way, on the back of the botched Afghanistan withdrawal by Joe Biden. Uh, but of course, it has, it has set some alarm bells ringing as to whether or not the United States is actually um, a trustworthy ally, uh, because it has had quite negative impacts uh, for, for France. So can you tell us a little bit about the background of this and where you stand on this? Yeah, it's it's not the United States that is not the trustworthy allies. It's Joe Biden's administration. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge difference. Come on, the, man. The, the two countries. No, but it, I, I mean it. Yeah. The two countries are, are, are way more than just uh, the leadership that they have right now. Sure. Macron was so happy to have his, his pal Joe Biden elected. America is back. It's wonderful. <laughs> We're going to go all the hands NATO together. Summit. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it was just shameful to see him like giggle like a young boy who was a, a new friend in the, in, the, in the classroom. The truth is that Joe Biden, uh, contrary to what we, that most people expected, he brought back an, an imperial America that does not give a damn about its ally. It, the, 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 the administration is bullying all, all its ally in following the path that Joe Biden's administration has decided to go. All these allies, all the allies, including the, 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 the Brits, we were all thrown, thrown to, the, to the track. I, I, that's, yeah, yeah. I think that's the expression. In Afghanistan, the, the way the, 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 he lied, saying that the Taliban would not take over the country when he knew that. 
the way that he left like 85 billion dollar worth of uh, military equipment w- knowingly knowing that they they would use it knowing knowing that all those equipment would, would reach at one point the street of Europe or the street of the United States is shameful and right now what he did in uh, in, in in the Indo-Pacific area which is uh, uh, an area where France has a lot of uh, of interest is uh, is also not a way to tra- treat an ally to make it simple France signed an, a, a defense agreement with Australia five years ago. Five years ago, we had a, a global agreement, diplomatic and uh, military. We sold them uh, submarines for a, a contract that is quite a, a large amount. It's $60 billion over many years. And uh, Australia and France haven't seen eye to eye on, on some subject recently, Especially with what's going on uh, in Australia right now, we, you know, it's not difficult to disagree on on, on some points. But you know, a, a contract, a signed contract, is a signed contract. And Australia decided to re- recant its uh, yeah. its its word and sign a contract with the United States, saying, you know, we, we are not going to pay France. We're not going to hold our word. We're going to to breach the contract and we're going to buy those submarines to to the United States. It, it's a couple of problems. First of all. When there is a tender, it's fair game. And I don't mind, you know, we, we are in competition. Uh, there is a, a huge uh, defense industry here. There is a huge defense industry in France. So we compete mm-hmm. against one another, no problem. But once a contract is won, and after five years, you don't go in the back of your allies and, and try to, 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 to sucker punch them. This is basically what they, what they have done. So it's, it's really uh, um, something that will, that, that will be sort of for a long time. The French ambassador was called back. Can you imagine Macron a walk among the walk who is yeah. calling back his ambassador because it, it, it's it's so unfair and so unheard of that it needed some kind of a diplomatic reaction. First problem. Second problem, in order to do that, Joe Biden not only had to bully the, the Australian, but he also promised to sell nuclear submarines, mm-hmm. which means that for the first time ever, the United States are going to organize proliferation. We have agreement, international agreement, saying that we are not going to sell nuclear equipment to non-nuclear countries. Australia is not a nuclear country, mm. defense-wise. They don't have any nuclear equipment. You know, they don't have the nuclear weapon. They don't have any nuclear we- equipment. And the United States is, for the first time, organizing proliferation. What will they say the day Russia is going to do that or China is going to do that? They'll be told, look, you did that in Australia, so let us mind your own business and, and don't come with an with, with example that you cannot hold off. So this is also an, another terrible problem because the region in which t- it takes place, which is the, the Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, is where the, the, the next, uh, the, the next uh, dangers are, 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 are laying. Uh, China, as an, as, as an expansionist view, is expanding its uh, political system it has a presence that is increasing in, in the region, and uh, not many nations are capable of, of being there. France being part of the of the one of the five members of the Security Council of the United Nations, we have we have um, territories, overseas territories over there. We have them in on the east coast of Africa. We have them uh, in New Caledonia, which is right above Australia. We have them in the Pacific Ocean with the, the French Polynesia. We have a footprint over there, and all we want to do is find uh, um, a reasonable and fair agreement with the United States in order to face the foe that we have, and the only foe we have is China. By doing that, is Biden has made it very difficult for all the people that share the same foe to get aligned together. So it, it is worrisome. You know, um, in his 2014 memoir, uh, Bob Gates, the um, Secretary of Defense under George Bush and Obama, he said, quote, Biden has been wrong on nearly every major foreign policy and national security issue over the past four decades, end quote. And this seems like just another one. I mean, just to quickly go back to Afghanistan, let's not forget about the American servicemen who were killed outside that airport. And then about how Joe Biden's regime, frankly, you know, droned seven children to death in an attempt to make it look like they were leaving on a on a strong footing killed 10 in total and then lied about it refused to tell the american public who these isis these phantom isis k fighters hit were and then two weeks later had to come out and acknowledge the fact that he committed a war crime if effectively in order to save face on the on the on the world stage so this quote always rings true to me and it, and it raises this question about what you just said why didn't Joe Biden try to bring along everyone 
into what is that you know what AUKUS has become because it will require you know the might the fortitude the re- the resolve of of all of these of you know Western I, this is a problem for me because I hate saying liberal um, and, and there are very few Western nations anymore that actually stand for Western values but but it does it would it would be better to bring all of those people together and yet he's divided that so it comes back to this again and again and again. Is 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 Joe Biden playing into Beijing's hands via his foreign policy? Because it sure seems like it to me. It might. It, there might be some interest shared by uh, himself or people close to him that could lead us to believe, or at least it should be investigated whether he's playing into the CCP hands. But also, and we're discussing that with uh, with Matt Gates uh, last night. Uh, it has to do with Echelon. We, you know, this is this uh, listening project uh, in order to listen worldwide to all the conversation. And there is a, an alliance called uh, Five Eyes, which uh, brings basically the Anglo-Saxon uh, democracy or Anglo-Saxon regime uh, all together in order to organize a, a huge, a, a vast net around the planet in order to be able to to listen to whoever they want to. Mm. And I think that they have been focusing so much on being able to control their own population that they they forgot that the the, the, the key problem was facing china and uh, its expansion policies so i think that he's he's wrong again as he was uh, on 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 every single uh, foreign affairs decision or advice that he gave but i think it is more because he's blinded by what he wants so him or the people that are uh, working with him because sometimes when you when you listen to him you wonder if he's if he's the one expressing all the thought that that comes through d- during his speeches. Well, uh, you watched his you watched his United Nations uh, General Assembly speech. What what do you think? Is is he the one organizing these words? Ye- yes, yesterday at the, the it's a bad example. Sorry, but I I thought that yesterday he was pretty much in charge of what he was saying. Mm. It was pretty much in in uh, what he used to say when when he was vice president. This is fake. This so they gave him a they gave him a booster shot. Maybe it, I, I'd <laughs> like to know what it steroids. is because you know when when I reach that age, maybe there are some some useful useful things to. I need it now. To, to, <laughs> it would be it would be terrible. You would be running around the studio. <laughs> um, but no, yesterday. So at, he was a little U- bit more compass mentis yesterday. Yeah, a little yesterday, bit more. I, f- I felt I felt he was in charge of what he was saying, but and it words. was ringing true. The word it's fake. Yeah, they 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 are always saying the same thing. It's yeah. just like let's all be together. Yeah. Let's you know we want democracy, we want freedom. The actions are not at that at all. So he did spend more time talking about the rights of Moldovans than he did talking about the rights of Americans. I yeah, because in that be, speech, because the rights of Americans are are by nature they, well, they are there. So they're in his way. <laughs> they're in his way. Is the problem? Could be the the talking about Afghanistan also and seeing from a foreign viewpoint. One of the things that is always that has is that, that that we've noticed from American troops is that you don't leave a mind behind. It is something that was you know this, this is what the French army does. The Foreign Legion never never will let one mind behind, and this is what is what defines the American servicemen. They you don't leave a mind behind, and knowing that there are so many Americans that are left behind enemy lines in in, in Taliban's hands is something also that that must question all the veterans here. I'm pretty sure that American veterans are do not understand that mm-hmm. because this is not what what people that are in 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 operation, people that are fighting they don't do that. You you don't you don't leave comrades in on 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 the field behind enemy lines and I don't know how we will survive that. Just finally on this subject and then I want to talk to you just very quickly about the border and what you're doing uh, what you're doing in the US uh, right now but Boris Johnson used a uh, uh, a couple of phrases this morning. I'd like to get your uh, your feedback on it. He's speaking to reporters outside the Capitol, um, and he said, quote, I think it's time for some of our dearest friends around the world to prene un grip uh, about this and donnez-moi un break. Are you, will you donne him a break? I don't know where he wants it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but, you know, I'm not as upset as the, as the Brits as I'm at the, the Americans. Mm. The, the the Brits have, have always been opportunistic. Mm. You know, they always saw well, themselves think, so as a, as a aircraft carrier, the yeah. U.S. aircraft carrier in sure. Europe. So you know, they saw an opportunity, they seized it. Uh, but I, do you think because there was a, there was a briefing that came out last week that basically said the British should organise this thing between the United States and Australia, and then a lot of the chatter behind all of that was 
it was it was almost a a payback to the French for what's going on in the Channel and the migrants and all the Brexit stuff. Do you think that I that don't believe was, so? You don't? I don't believe so because we have an excellent agreement called the Lanc- Lancaster House Agreement, which is a defense agreement. When you look at the European continent, mm. you have two arm two two ar- armies that that do know what they what they are doing and that are capable of engaging worldwide. Uh, I, I I don't want to diminish the, the capabilities of other countries, but uh, Germany, for example, doesn't have a, an army that is capable of anything. They, they they do spend money, they have some military equipment, but they, they have so many constitutional problems that they, they will never engage anywhere. That's why they are happy to buy the protection of the United States. The United Kingdom has a real defense industry and they have capabilities of engaging overseas. They have they come from a from a, a weak standing point after after so many engagement at the at the end of the of the 20th century, but still it is an operational army and France has a very oper- operational army, and we 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 have been and remain engaged on on many fronts overseas. So the Lancaster House Treaty is a treaty that I believe both countries hold dear and that they will want to 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 deepen. Uh, Sure, maybe, may, maybe the prime minister right now wants to show that he's kind of in charge, but it is not something that the Australian would have taken from the from the British. Sorry, uh, Raim, I don't, I don't think they listen to you anymore. They do listen to the United States because they are worried that this is the only gorilla on the on the Western on the Western world, and the gorilla like slapped on the table and tell them you have to do it. Um, so no, really, the the one that we hold accountable for the treason are the United States of Joe Biden. So you again, will, the United States of Joe Biden. So you will give him a break to Boris Johnson. I, I don't you even kind of giving him a break because I don't consider him yeah. part of the problem. Yeah, Sorry, that, I mean that's all he's asking he's, for, really. He's, yeah. he's, he's 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 not the he's not the big. He, you know, I'm, I'm sure he would like to, you know, if he's saying that, it's because he would like to be a problem, but he's not. <laughs> I like that. Um, so just very quickly, in conclusion, you're here, you're in Washington, D.C. right now. You're flying off tomorrow. Tell us where you're going, what you're doing, um, and why you're interested. We are, we are, tomorrow we are going to Arizona. We're going to Tucson and Phoenix. We have a double interest. First of all, we are going to, there seems to be some announcement tomorrow regarding the forensic analysis of the presidential uh, election. And it's interesting to know what people are talking about. So we are curious to understand exactly what's going on. It's a, it's a, it's a subject that keeps on popping up in, in, in the news, but we, we I don't really understand exactly what we're talking about. And I'm very interested in, in seeing firsthand what it is. And we're going to, to see the, the chair of the, of the Arizona Republican Party. And uh, also, and this is what we are most excited about, because it's very interesting to see things firsthand. We're going to go at the border to see what this uh, migrant crisis is uh, is all about. Usually when you go on the field, you discover that what media tell you is uh, is uh, is not even half of the real story. Uh, in a, a year ago, I went with, uh, with a, an, an, a couple of a member of the European Parliament to the border between uh, Turkey and Greece, and we witnessed that the tension was way more than what the media were saying. We had a lot of people, young men, no women, no kids, trying to cross the border in a very aggressive way, trying to basically invade Greece. It was it was more an invasion than a, a migration. Right. And I want to see what's going on at the, at the U.S. border. How are the migrants behaving? Who are they? Are, are they just young men or are there women and kids because they are fight, fleeing poverty and, and, and insecurity. So this is what we're going to do tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. I hope you don't get whipped, although you are a Frenchman, so you might be into that. Yeah, I will be on the horse. <laughs> um, let me just be very clear that a, a French member of the European Parliament is going to the border before the Vice President of the United States, who is supposedly the borders are. That's what's happening tomorrow. Yeah, if you put it this way, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jerome Riviere, it's always a pleasure to have you in studio. Can you tell our audience where they can follow you, how they can get uh, all the latest from, from you, your team, what they should be looking at on well, social media? We're on, on Getter, we're on Twitter, and uh, the, the handle is Jerome, J-E-R-O-M-E underscore Riviere, R-I-V-I-E-R-E. And we'll tag you when all this uh, Thank podcast you. comes out so you get uh, more followers, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to get on Getter. We do enjoy the conversation on there, G-E-T-T-R dot com. I'm on there, at Raheem Kassam. I want to say a big special thank you to all of the members who have joined up to support our work at fundrealnews.com. That's our website where you can join us and support us. A couple of the names of the people who have joined in recent days, Laurie, Marianne, Melissa, 
Signorino, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, Paul, Michael, Melissa, Donna, James, Jeremy, Maggie, Joseph, Roshin, ZJ, or ZJ, Grant, Megan, Frank, Deborah, Ricky, Hardit, Ronald, Jill, Lawrence, Theodore, Kevin, Dwight, Sean, Jason, Stephen, Mary, Charles, Jonas, Stephen again, Catherine, Susan, Frederick, Betsy, Carrie, John, Sean, thank you. Thank you for supporting Real News. Thank you to Jean, Ed, Cheryl, Butch, Janine, Jerry, Rose, Bill, Elizabeth, Connie, Joe, Nancy, William, Linda, Bertha, Doug, Alan, Rhonda, John, and Sandra, to name just a few. We are not funded by billionaires. We are not funded by any corporate backing. This show is brought to the people by the people. So I thank you once again. Make sure you're checking out thenationalpulse.com. Follow Jerome Riviere. And we'll see you again for another episode of The National Pulse in a couple of days.